Welcome to Boomcast, the official podcast from Boombox.io. I'm Music by Lucas. And I'm Fabio from Noise. Boombox is a collaboration tool to provide a connection point for producers, musicians, and engineers to be able to share, store, and synergize creativity. For this month's competition, if you are one of the first 1,000 subscribers, we will be giving away $500 worth of studio equipment. And that's up to you what you spend it on. It can be hardware or software. So comment down below in order to enter and let us know exactly what you would spend that $500 on. Today, we have a very special guest. We are joined by Josh from the YouTube channel, Music Tech Help Guy. Josh, welcome. How are you? I'm wonderful. Uh, happy to be here. So Josh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your background with music and how you started Music Tech Help Guy? Yeah, so I, I've i been a recording engineer and a music producer for almost 20 20- years now. Um, I started off doing a lot of live sound. I was a professional musician for a while. And I started teaching college courses a little later into my career. And I was teaching like advanced sampling and synthesis techniques. And the students in class were having trouble keeping up with it. So I said, well, maybe there's some way I can create some content outside of of class. And so I started the, the YouTube channel not expecting it to go anywhere, not ex- expecting it to be, you know, to blow up to 300,000 subscribers as it is now. Yeah. Uh, Logic 10 came out uh, back, yeah. back in 2013. And I started a series of tutorials, just like sequential, you know, almost like a college level course. Yeah. And it just blew up from there. So um, that's what I've been doing along with um, mixing and producing and uh, teaching. So that's that's what I've been doing for the last 18 years, 19 years. Those smaller videos, were those ever part of a bigger course? Like, What did you have in mind when you were building those videos other than just wanting to help people? Um, well, originally it was kind of like, hey, uh, if, you, if you forgot what I taught you in class today, go check out this video I made on YouTube. And it sort of recaps some of the things we talked about in class. And the thing is nowadays, like education, I mean, sure, you can go to college and you can get a degree and that's that's one thing. But yeah, like you can learn a lot. I mean, like re- there are some like really, really great educational channels on YouTube. And I just figured, you know, this wasn't really a market that was tapped back then. And this is yeah. keep in mind, this is like 12 years ago. I mean, I've been yeah. doing this for a while. You know, now I'm, I'm I did one of my little side jobs is I develop course curriculum for the Los Angeles Film School. So I just developed wow. their entire bachelor's degree for them. It's yeah, it's sort of being a, a, a music producer, mixing engineer, plus also being like an instructional designer has kind yeah. of become my my job. It's like I almost created the job for myself rather than looking for a job. So what would you say to music producers who maybe they want to start a YouTube channel? Maybe they think it's too late or maybe they're just not sure how to do it. Like, what would you say to like some people that to how to get started on YouTube as a music producer? I would say having some sort of video based social media presence, whether it be YouTube or Instagram or tick, even TikTok. I, I don't have a TikTok yet. If they want to get into the game. I would say just do it and, and, and play to your strengths. And, you know, figure out what you're good at, like figure out what your niche things are that other people can't do as well as you. Right. And play to those, play to those strengths. Yeah. You did that with Logic Pro for sure. Like complete mm, tutorials. I've watched so many of those. (laughs) So many. I can't tell you how much you've helped me. You said, you said you've been doing this for 12 years. I mean, that is so impressive and it really gives an indicator, I think, to so many people how long it does take to uh, build up credibility and a catalog of music. What kept you motivated throughout all those years? And were there times where you thought, I don't want to do this anymore? You know, if I could quit everything today and just mix music, I would. But th- the thing that's wonderful about social media is it helps propel your your professional career. Like right. most, I would maybe not most, but I'd say a very good chunk of people who come to me for mixing work are people who have found me from YouTube or right. they learned to record themselves in their own home studio or record their band or put out their first EP or single by watching my videos and other people's videos. And then they're like, hey, I'm, I've recorded all this. It sounds good. I I don't really have an ear for mixing. I don't really have the equipment for mixing. 
and would you like to mix it for me so it's it's kind of like a feedback loop of putting out content people watching it creating their own content then some of them trickle back to me and ask for mixing and, and mastering work. That's and, true. It all kind of circles back and forth. Like you, uh, you know, if that does well, then your the social media does well, then your business does well. If your business does well, they probably check out your social media. So it all kind of goes. And do you also produce your own music and put that out often as well? Or I, I used to more, more so in the past than I do now. I, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, one of the things is when you, when you start producing and mixing other people's music, uh, sometimes you you struggle to find time to make your own, but sure. yeah, I have a back catalog Guilty. of a whole bunch of songs that I I need to get out <laughs> or do something with. But I've kind of been parsing them off to other people. You know, I've been yeah. working with a few artists and just uh, just kind of taking some of my stuff and saying, well, this would sound better in this person's style rather than my oh. style. And so, I mean, I was I was a, a guitar player in a heavy metal band, you know, ten years ago, right. and we played all over the place and. Um, we were kind of around the Michigan, Chicago area. And so we, we, I wouldn't say toured, but we gigged all over the, over that scene for, I mean, seven, eight years. And then I kind of got out of the, the live performance thing and, you know, came more into, uh, nah. into production. I get the heavy metal vibe just from the, uh, the color of the sound panels in, uh, <laughs> in your studio. Something that I'm always so impressed by on your channel is as soon as there there's a logic update and it's not like you've got apple on the phone you're like hey by the way we're going to release some new features tomorrow you know here's a quick heads up as or soon as it he? comes yeah, or wait or do you most of the uh like when it comes to soft like new software being released from any company whether it be apple or, or it's even new hardware from some companies they will typically send us an advanced copy like usually mm. like a week in advance oh, to review okay. so i i do work with i'm not officially a part of the beta team uh, -huh. uh for logic but i do uh, assist with the beta team in in reporting awesome. bugs and things like that beforehand that's part of it so I, I, I there's definitely at least three or four other like logic based youtubers who are getting advanced copies of uh, uh of logic before it comes out like a you know, it's like, a again, it's just a beta release. It's still one of those things where it's I'm rushing to get the product out, you know, because a lot of times they'll send an update like two days before it's released right. in some cases or a day before it's released. You know, they're constantly tweaking things, you know, on the fly. to. to so then to are you like right. instantly getting into the studio to record at that point? Or, you know, is it like time is of the essence? Like you want to be the first one to have the video out or? Yeah. When it comes to a new version of logic, I pretty much drop everything I'm doing. <laughs> and I just, I just <laughs> focus on that, you know, which is why, you know, some of those videos, uh, maybe don't have the best quality, you know, I'm a little out of focus or I'm a little red in the face, you know, cause I'm just like oh my gosh. editing as go, fast go, go. as I can to get it done. We're so grateful for those videos because none of us over here, I know Lucas is a logic, logic pro user, user as well. too. Yeah. We don't want to, we don't want to read through that manual. We don't no. want to read through the release notes. So you giving it to no. us in this beautiful bite size and everyone else, you know, in this beautiful bite size information is, is incredibly helpful. So what are some top tips that you have that you've learned over because you've been doing this for over 10 years that you've learned running a youtube channel successful youtube channel what are some things like that you've learned along the way that are like now like the things you live by maybe i would say the number one thing you can do on youtube is upload consistently mm -hmm. um like make a, a monday wednesday friday upload schedule or you know what i mean just if, if you're mm -hmm. if you're uploading you've got to get content up as much as you possibly can, if, if, if possible every day, you know, mm. and what I've been seeing a lot is people doing Monday through Friday releases, and then like a couple shorts on the weekend, or mm -hmm. maybe, you know, three or four main releases during the week, and then a few shorts. So even I've been dabbling with the shorts as well to try to fill the gap. And it's not like, Hey, let's put a fluff video in here that, you know, that doesn't, uh, you know, that doesn't, uh, really contribute to anything right. it's more like you've got to keep people viewing your content because when they start to get bored they or they start to not see you as often they start to disappear or the numbers sort of you know trickle because there were several occasions where i just 
I was just really busy. So I, I didn't upload for a month, you know, and, mm. and you can just see the growth sort of stagnate. Um, do you think so that's, short, that's the number one thing. Do you think shorts are the future? And um, yeah, yeah, how are you ha- incorporating those? And how have they affected your long format videos? The shorts, I don't think they're the future because YouTube, I think, is such a unique platform D- difference, you know, uh, so then, you know, like Facebook, Instagram and TikTok, where they're really focusing on short content to the point where you can't really even upload a video mm-hmm. longer than a certain length, right. uh, depending on you know what you're uploading. And I, I don't see that going away on YouTube. And I don't see it. I don't I, I see shorts growing on YouTube, but I don't see them becoming the predominant um, thing people are going to YouTube for. Like I haven't had cable TV in five years because I have an Apple TV in my living room. And I just, <laughs> when mm-hmm. I sit down at the end of the night and crack open a beer and, and just relax, I'm going to YouTube and I'm like looking up documentaries. I'm looking up educational. Right. I'm a huge nerd. I love documentaries and, and educational yeah. stuff. So I'm, that's my TV now. Yeah. And I just don't, you know, I don't, I don't see that going away. I don't see long format content uh, going away. In so, terms of of te- teaching things, I just kind of have to put things. Hmm. I can only teach things that I can condense into a one minute format, which is very few topics. Can I can I condense into a one minute format? Are you doing those separately? Then are you creating separate content for the short form content, or are you using clips from your long form videos? Uh, both. I, okay. I what I, you know, when I did the logic up the last logic update, I did like a short format um, version of the, you know, the top 10 new things that are in the new version of logic. Um, whereas other times I'll, I'll just be like working on a mix or like working on a, on a song and I'll be like, oh, that's a cool little trick I just did there mm-hmm. that I, I've never taught. And I'll be like, let's, can, let's do a quick, you know, here's how to do this technique in one minute. So sometimes most of my shorts, end up being things that I've just discovered on the fly while I'm working on other things. And and I'll sometimes I'll just take a quick pause and I'll just make a little short and then I'll, I'll resume my normal, you know, work duties. So just a quick shout out to Boombox and thank you for their help with our collaboration, because if you comment down below, we are going to offer you $500 of studio equipment. And what we want to know from you is Lucas, what kind of studio gear would you want? So if you subscribe below, if you're one of the first 1000 subscribers, and if you comment what kind of studio gear you want, Boombox.io is sponsoring someone this month with a $500 gift card to Studio Gear. So for our out-the-box question. We have an out-of-the-box question for you, which is the segment where we ask you an off-topic question. And our off-topic question, uh, tis the season, is... Josh, what do you want for Christmas? What's on What's on your list? Uh, I already got my Christmas gift. It was a PS Five, and uh, but the the other thing I would love is a, I want a new smoker. Nice. So I like how like a lot of the stuff that you do outside of music is for good times. Like you're talking about, you know, uh, enjoying yourself at the end of the day, and uh, yeah, smoking like, meats. Yeah, <laughs> doing your stuff. <laughs> like it's. <laughs> And then you also, but it sounds like you also really enjoy music, which is great. So the passion has still always been there. You have to take time away from making music professionally because otherwise you get burnt out. Like, and, and ambition, you know, ambition's a good thing to have to, and, and the, having the drive to build your business and your brand yeah. and all that. But ambition can be very dangerous if you start leaving your personal life behind and getting sucked into your professional life and only your professional life. I was getting so sucked into my professional life and so consumed by ambition and trying to push things forward with my professional life that I kind of got out of touch with my personal life. And you have to, you have to balance the two things because otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy and you'll just, you'll just be stressed out all the time. Then you'll sort of grow to hate the work that you do Right. Because you're so burnt out by it. So there, there, you have to keep a balance between your your personal and your, your professional life, for sure. 
And so I think diffi- all three of us relate in that way. Yeah. It's so difficult when you work for yourself. And and then there's also yeah. like, ah, sometimes you've got to make that sacrifice because there's no growth without pain. And it's a bit of a push and pull. I, I mean, I feel exactly the same way. I think COVID lifted the veil for me. And I actually, firstly, I stopped my YouTube channel for six months because I was like, I need a break. I need to yeah. like refresh and and feel re-inspired by the content I was creating because uh, it's, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you both feel the same way, but you got to make the content for your audience, but you also have right. to make it for yourself, right? Because right? that's why we all started doing it because we felt passionate about it. And so when it's too, when you're delivering too much to appease people, it doesn't have this, it doesn't strike inspiration in the same way. 100%. Exactly. I 100%. Yep. Well Josh, said. if you were to start your YouTube channel again, Yes, today. good question. Good question. What are three things that Ooh. you would do differently? Oh, I would have started with having my face on camera in every mm. single video or just about every single video, because that's one change I've made recently that has been positive. The uh, the 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 one thing about like other like similar channels that have like grown beyond my you know the scope of my channel is that mm. they have consistently put out live video like there's a live video component to every video even if Mm -hmm. it's a logic tutorial or a DAW tutorial that's something I would do um right out front like I'm kind of a perfectionist I'll sit there and I'll just Mm -hmm. I'll 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 focus on one phrase that has a plosive in it you know for 10 minutes trying to fix a plosive or a a pop or something and trying to get trying to get the dialogue mic to sound perfect and you know, de-reverb it and de-noise it and de-click it and do all these things to it. And, but the reality is a lot of people on, on, on the listening end, on the watching end, don't pay attention to those things. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. don't put out, you know, not right. quality content. You certainly want to put out quality content, but there's a certain balance where you can only push it so far and you can only mold it and shape it and, and fine tune it to a point where people aren't going to, to, to realize that you've done all that hard work. So you don't want to do, you know, that last 10% of work if, if no one's going to notice. Mm. Um, so I'd say those are the two things getting my face on camera and not being, you know, too picky <laughs> about, uh, we need about one my production. More. We need one more. Oh, is one it three? Yes. Um, oh, geez. Well, I, I putting out consistent content, like I said, there before, you go. making, make, yeah. making a legit schedule and making that schedule part of my work schedule. Like, I you know, in, in a, in a typical week, okay, Monday, Tuesday, YouTube videos, get two or three, four videos done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm doing mixing Friday. I'm doing, you know, something else, course development and, and then even the weekend for- I take off. Yeah. And then even for people who, cause maybe someone's listening to that and they're like, well, I have a full-time job and I have school or I have something like that. And it's like, well, you're saying if you were starting your YouTube channel now, as if, you know, you're in your current position, but it's like, you can still, uh, you can still succeed even if, and, and, and grow, even if you do have, cause like, for example, when I started my YouTube channel, I did have a full-time job in school. And I remember thinking like, why did I wait until I was at my busiest point in life essentially to like, start this, like, you know, hobby or side hustle, whatever you want to call it. And we were able to do it. Uh, luckily I did have someone to help film, uh, Lauren helped film, uh, my videos, but we did it at like 10 PM to 11 PM. And we just put out one a week. Um, and, uh, it worked and we started gaining traction, um, with that. So it is possible to kind of work your way up. And of course, now we work more than 10 to 11 PM, but, um, you know, it, it is possible to start and kind of grow from there. I love the, what you said about consistency though, and, and the fact that you, how, when you took like a month off that, for example, you know, you notice that the numbers dwindled and that's why I would say it's so important to be able to have that balance, like you said, and to kind of make your music job, not be an, just another job that you need a vacation from, but to sort of incorporate little moments of vacation into your actual job and into your daily routine so that you don't feel so burnt out or so like, you know, overworked. Yeah. All, all great points. Great points. You, you, you have to, you have to still enjoy the job you do. You can't, you know what I mean? And and it's, you know, people say this all the time, especially with music and arts, they say, if it becomes a job, I'm afraid I'm not going to like it anymore, or I'm going to, again, get burnt out by it. And Mm -hmm. you have to, like you said, you have to sort of even insert 
elements of your personal life into your channel because whether you like it or not, you are becoming an internet personality yeah. by mm -hmm. starting a YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Whether you have mm -hmm. 10 subscribers or 10 million, you are putting yourself out there and becoming a personality. In You, you kind of can insert your personal life into it. And uh, I think sometimes that makes it a little more enjoyable. Like I'll record a song of mine or I'll record my wife's band and put, use uh -huh. it as a musical example or I'll you know, Love do that. this and that, or so. We've all experienced hateful and negative comments and feedback before on our YouTube. And I am very guilty of the fact that if I don't have enough carbohydrates and caffeine in my body at the time of reading those comments, sometimes I am a bit of a loose cannon. I'm wondering, how do you approach the haters? Josh doesn't get any haters. It's just you, Fabio. <laughs> uh, I knew it. <laughs> in, in the early days in the early days i'd get really worked up and i'd just be you know mm -hmm. keyboard warrior defending mm -hmm. my honor you know mm -hmm. and nowadays like if it's anything that's i would say hateful like like legitimately hateful or just like you're just being a troll most of the time i just yeah. block them from the channel and move on with my life you know, some people will disagree with me on points and that's fine. Like that's like, I'm all for open discourse on topics and opinions. And, you know, I, tr I try to respond mm -hmm. to as many comments as I can. And I try to address as many as I can, but, you know, I, I mean, just to give you one example, I, one time I, I, I mentioned that my wife is from Brazil and I had someone say, you and your wife should move back to Brazil. Like <laughs> basically like get, get the heck out of the U.S. You know what oh, I mean? Like, I'm like oh, okay, okay. Instant block. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. so sometimes those things happen. So I, I don't because my channel is more educational rather than mm -hmm. um, entertainment based, I would say if unless it's if it's something that can be discussed as discourse, mm -hmm. then I will respond in a respectful way the best I can. Other times, I, it's just an instant block and just mm -hmm. you can you can no longer comment on my channel. You can view my videos. Feel free to. But uh, yeah. You're not going to be able to comment anymore. Makes sense. I mean, the one thing that I heard, which has really helped me with any time I get a comment from a hater, is just the saying, hurt people hurt people. Like when people are hurting, they their natural reaction is to try to push that hurt outward. Yeah. And they have like that negative energy. And so now when I read like a hateful comment, I try to think like that, like, oh, this person's just hurting. Like, that's why they're expressing Absolutely. themselves in this way. And then I almost feel empathy. Obviously, like you said, if they're just being like totally, uh, you know, hateful, then it's different. But yeah, I feel that empathy. Uh, and it helps me just be able to just disregard it or to comment back in a nice way. Or actually, a lot of times, even the other followers will even reply back uh, for you, which is kind of cool. Um, and kind of, uh, you know, spread that positivity there. So I think we all have pretty positive yeah, audiences yeah, yeah. for the most part, too. Yeah, for, definitely. And, and, and like you said, you have to stay positive and you have to keep a, a positive mindset. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy. <laughs> And yeah, you do have to empathize with people. And, and I, I'm the same way. I'll look at like a really negative comment and I'm like, I don't know what that person is going through sure. mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. for them to feel that way. Or, mm -hmm. you know, they may, especially in this day and age, you might just be misinformed. You might just mm -hmm. be, you, you know, your head may not be in the right place. And so you're, right. you're lashing out as a, as a result of your situation rather than actual hate for that person or for that content so yeah that and that's part of the reason why a lot of times i'm just like block and it's just you know yeah, we can yeah. we can both move our separate ways peacefully and it's amazing when you do kill people with kindness sometimes they take a step back and they chat themselves yes. and like oh I've and they, they sometimes they so apologize as well and it's yeah. just like you know we're just trying to we're just trying to set the tone we're just having a good time you know what i mean well i had a good time this is yeah. a really good podcast and for your first podcast crushed it Comment below if you thought Music Tech Help Guy crushed the answers on the podcast. <laughs> Josh, it's been such a pleasure having you on. And yes. uh, yeah, we hope, no, there's no doubt that your channel will reach a million subscribers at some point. No doubt. We love your content. Please keep putting it out. We find it incredibly useful. You know, so everybody who's watching this podcast, there's make a link sure in the description subscribe. below. Oh, yeah. And make and sure, make sure and well make <laughs> that you comment if you can and subscribe, right, Fabio, for the for to be one of the first thousand subscribers. You could comment be. below. The question yeah. of the day was 
what would you spend your $500 gift card on for studio gear? What kind of studio gear would you get? Comment that below. Uh, you can find me as well on at music by Lucas and Fabio, where can they find you? You can find me in the link in the description below on uh, Instagram at noise underscore London. And Josh, where can they find you? Yeah, where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube at music tech help guy and Instagram at music tech help guy. Thank you so much, guys, for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Make sure to go to boombox.io. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. We will see, uh, see you guys soon. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye. Awesome.